All right, all right, all right. Here we go back again with another episode here on the other side of the coin. particular player today who we tend to forget to put into the equation when we look at all these recent transfer rumors there's a lot of us that want to buy every shiny toy out there every time we get rumored with someone and we tend to forget this particular player and where he fits into the whole equation before we start entertaining uh, thoughts about other shiny toys out there so this particular player is Ruben Loftus Cheek now you know, recently I've been uh, given a particular link, which is a particular video from Chelsea's YouTube channel. And uh, it was about Ruben Loftus-Cheek rehabilitation process and what he had to go through during this uh, crazy, crazy Achilles uh, injury that he's had to endure uh, since the end of last season and then almost this season. And honestly, that particular video just broke my heart. Seeing him... You know, going through the whole process of coming back and, you know, that whole desire to come back and play for Chelsea, what it means for him, it just really, really broke my heart. Uh, knowing how injury prone his whole career has been so far. And, you know, it's not fair because he's such a potent talent for us. You know, for me, he is our best player when fit, when at maximum peak he's our best player for me you know he's probably after Hazard has left now he's probably my best most favorite player in Chelsea uh, football club so having said that let's let's look back at you know what he's sort of achieved and what his expectations could be for next season and you know for me it feels like it's do or die uh, next season for me uh, you know he's He's had, a, as I said, he's had an injury sort of laden, see, you know, career, and it was only probably not last season, the season before, where he was in loan with Crystal Palace, where things started to change a little bit. I think he had a decent um, loan spell at Crystal Palace, where he was developing and he was in the right trajectory, and then last season, you know, started off a bit slow, didn't get enough game time in the beginning, but later on, from sort of mid to later stages of the season, he was one of the main players, definitely in Europa Cup, and then a lot more, um, you know, appearances in the Premier League later in the seasons, and, you know, he became one of our mainstays of the, of the team. And his combination play with Hazard was just elevating Hazard to the next level as well, and it was taking his game to another level too. So he was definitely, definitely on the rise and, you know, 10 goals, five assists last season was definitely a breakthrough season for him considering he didn't start off last season. He sort of came through from the middle part of the season. So, you know, it's very important for us to realise and remember that knowing what he could give us next season when fit. You know, some of the goals, and, and not just the goals, some of the involvement in the game. Um, you know, he generally played in the left or the right side, generally played in the left side with Hazard in the left centre mid position, and he looked electric. You know, box to box, his size, it, it seemed like finally he got control of his body. He understood what his body is capable of, he looked so much more relaxed, so much more, you know, flexible with his movement, which I never saw in previous seasons when he got snippets of opportunities. Last season specifically, especially probably with the Sari style, you know, being more possession-based and a lot more smartness in, 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 in the philosophy, he really flourished. He really, really flourished. And, you know, 
his one touch play, his passing ability, his ability to just basically drive the ball from defense to offense in literally two to three steps. You know, with five or six gallops and he's down the track and into the attacking areas. You know, his usage of his body to shield the ball and swerve away from the defenders. Um, as I said, his link-up play with Hazard and many other players in midfield was just phenomenal. And he's got the ability to shoot outside from the box. He's got great shooting ability altogether anyway. And great technical dribbling ability as well. So all in all, he was looking so, so good last season. And of course, that injury came right at the end of it which was a silly you know, situation, a charity match that happened just before the Europa Cup final. And it was really sad to miss out on him because he truly deserved to play in the final, um, even though we won in a magnificent manner. But with him in the side would have been even more devastating for Arsenal, I believe, because he was at a peak, peak uh, level at that time. But nonetheless, look, he had that injury and... It was a massive setback you know straight away we got the news that he was going to be out for most of this season we also got the news that we've got the transfer ban Frank Lampard's coming in Hazard's leaving so it was just all a bit of a chaotic situation and um, it was sad for fans like myself it was sad to know that we're not going to see Ruben Loftus-Cheek for most parts of this season where Frank really could have used a player like him I think if he was fit, we would have been a far more balanced, far more potent, and his career would have gone to a different stage as well. Uh, you know, he would have built on that 10 goals, five assists from last season, and, you know, God knows what it could have been this season. But nonetheless, he went, he had the injury, and we've had to wait, we've had to wait, and finally, you know, around the February set of mark, just before the lockdown, you know, he finally... Um, you know, came back into fitness, started to feature in the bench, but as I said earlier, did not get the opportunity in some of the games just before the lockdown. But you know, he, he looked really, really sharp in the in the academy matches uh, that he played prior to being in the bench. So it all it was all looking great up until, of course, uh, the lockdown. And now, honestly, we don't know when football is going to be back and whether we are going to see Ruben Loftus cheek this season again. If it does come back, I'm pretty sure he'll feature in some way. And that's a positive for us. That's another new player, to be honest, for Frank in this, um, you know, in this season. If we were to finish, uh, you know, and that's a big if. But moving now into the next stage of this particular video, which is what's our expectation? You know, I did say that this is going to be do or die for Ruben Loftus-Cheek next season. And I completely believe it as well. I feel next season, you know, in, in the video that Ruben did, he specifically mentioned that, you know, he's he knows his strengths, he knows his weakness, and one of his biggest weaknesses is his own body. So, and, and he showed in that video his desire to do well and his desire to reach that particular level that he truly, you know, believes that he can get there. So next season, I feel like he has to play a lot of games. I know... He's just come back from an injury and maybe it might not be a good idea for him to play, you know, two matches per week. But at least a match a week is minimum. He's got to either feature in the Premier League or in the Champions League. You know, if we if we do qualify for the Champions League, hopefully we do. We're fourth at the moment. And, um, you know, if the season ends, hopefully we, we still qualify for Champions League. So he's got to somehow feature at least once a week, I believe, at a bare minimum permanently yes of course form matters but i'm 100 percent confident that this player will gain his form back i don't know how much you know that massive injury is going to create an impact in his playing uh, ability but i feel like you know he's he's going to come back it might be slow in the beginning but he's going to come back and when he does come back he's going to be explosive for us so it is prudent that we give him at least one game a week and hopefully he can get his confidence back and start really dominating um, you know, other oppositions and, and be a focal point for our team and then slowly start featuring more games and more games. I feel if this isn't the case next season and he gets another injury, God forbid he doesn't, 
then I honestly don't know where his career is going to go because another another season where he doesn't get to play enough games, I'm not sure what the long-term plan will be. Yes, he has uh, signed a five-year contract this season, just, um, I guess, just before the season started, or I think even just after it started, uh, his contract goes for 2024, which is a long, long time still, but to basically um, play most of next season, then we seriously need to think about what we want to do uh, with him and his future down the track. Um, and we possibly, and I hate to say this, possibly have to think about selling him and moving him on and perhaps replacing him with someone who we can actually uh, think of you know, playing week in, week out because you know, it, we simply cannot have a player that has so much talent like him but doesn't feature as much as we want him to. So, as I said, it's do or die season next season and I have every confidence that he's going to deliver but let me know what your thoughts are. There are other fans out there who think that he's not capable of completing a whole season without getting injured and you know he might be a, a bit of a liability for our team uh, basically taking up a squad position so let me know your thoughts if you did uh, if you if you have enjoyed this video hit the like button and yeah subscribe and uh, hit the bell notification to keep in touch with all my videos and let me know your thoughts until then See ya.